everyone. Welcome to episode number 596 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by me, Amelia Dalton. How about some Wi-Fi 6 and 6E to start your Friday? My guest this week is Infineon's Vice President of Wi-Fi, Shivaram Trikutam. And we are talking all about the advancements in the world of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the innovations that are improving connectivity, and the details of Infineon's new IROC Wi-Fi Connected MCU. Also this week, I check out a new smart material developed by a team of researchers at the University of Waterloo that can convert body heat into electricity. But first, please welcome Shivaram to Fish Fry. Shivaram, thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Thanks for inviting me. Nice to be talking to you. Excellent. Okay, so first off, let's talk about the advancements in connectivity and specifically Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So what have you seen in recent years? Let me start out by saying our world is constantly changing, evolving, and we've got Big mega trends like increasing levels of uh, urbanization, aging populations, and so on. And digitalization as a theme, right, is gaining more and more importance. That is to say, devices are getting connected, they're getting smarter, and so on and so forth. So, the three main ingredients for the theme of digitalization one is connectivity. You need to connect devices to the internet through some connectivity technology. You need compute, that is, processors and microcontrollers that run algorithms and functions. And then you need security. So these are the three main ingredients to build any digital product. And on connectivity specifically, we've been seeing a trend where more and more devices are getting smarter and connected. Like for instance, you used to have a thermostat in your house where you turned the knobs to adjust the temperature. Now you have a smarter thermostat, which is connected and it's digital and so on. So specifically Wi-Fi and Bluetooth as the primary connectivity technologies for the world of smart homes and the world of IoT in general, A lot of advancements in the last few years varying across performance aspects, security aspects, and capacity aspects, right? What I mean by that is about 10 years ago on any Wi-Fi network, you used to usually have only about 10 or 15 devices in a home. And now it's very common to have 30 to 40. And we project that by end of this decade, an average home is going to have more than 50 devices. And the ability to serve such large numbers of devices and also every home, I mean, your home as well as your neighbor's home also having Wi-Fi with 50 connected devices requires a level of capacity on the Wi-Fi networks. And those are some of the advancements that have been happening. And on the Bluetooth side, a lot of interesting developments there as well. Low energy audio, so you can have headphones that work for longer periods of time. There is there is mesh networks, there is assorted energy improvement, which basically lends itself to battery operated devices. So that at a high level is What's been happening in my world in the areas of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth? What do you think the market needs to make smart homes more of a reality for the mass market across the globe? I'd say there are three main aspects there. The first one is to do with interoperability and standardization, right? And what I mean by that is, let's say you buy a camera from one vendor, you buy a door lock, a connected door lock from another vendor, and a thermostat from another vendor. You have uh, various ecosystems in your house. Like, for instance, you use the Alexa, Amazon smart speakers. You use Apple's Siri-enabled speakers, or let's say Google's Hey Google-enabled stuff. You want all these devices to interoperate with each other. Users don't want to be locked into one particular ecosystem, right? The three big ones that I mentioned earlier. You want to be able to mix and match, interoperate. So that's very essential, and, and the matter standard is helping deliver this by bringing all of these varying ecosystems. And of course, there are more ecosystems than the ones I just mentioned. So the matter standard helps bring all these ecosystems together. So that's one. The second is to do with convenience, right? User experience. And there are multiple aspects to this. If you've used any of the smart home products, you'll know how complicated it is to set up some of these products. And that's not what the industry is looking for. You, you want non-engineering, non-technical folk to be able to bring home a smart home product and be able to open the box and connect your Wi-Fi network easily, right? So 
Ease of use, there's plug and play that's very vital to realize the dream of a smart home. And also along that vector, you also need to have extremely reliable devices, right? And what I mean by that is, let's say a light switch, right? I mean, you walk into your house after being on vacation for three months and you turn on the light switch, it always just works. And you need the same level of it always just works with all the connected devices. You don't want the devices to be dropping their Wi-Fi connection or Bluetooth connection just when you want to use them. It's an annoyance, right? So ease of use and reliable operation, that's number two. And the last but not the least is security and privacy, right? I mean, these are devices in your home. They're in all parts of your home. They're in your living room, they're in your bedroom and backyard and so on and so forth. So for end users to feel comfortable using these devices in their personal home spaces, they need to be secure and and they need to take care of privacy, right? So there's lots happening in that area. So so these are the three major areas, interoperability and standardization, ease of use and reliability, and security and privacy. These are the three things that are required to make smart homes a reality for the mass market. And of course, all of this needs to be affordable, right, to everyone for it to reach the mass market. That makes sense. Now, on the other side, how are these new innovations making connectivity better? Multiple aspects there, right? I mean, I I mentioned briefly earlier about capacity, right? I mean, Wi-Fi networks didn't used to be able to handle more than a certain number of devices, right? And now there are 50 plus devices that will be in an average home. And it's not just the number of devices, it's the types of devices, right? There are devices like uh, laptops and smartphones and TVs that demand very high data rates, right? And and on the other hand, there could be door locks and uh, thermostats and cameras that require very low data rate, but they require highly reliable connections. So imagine a freeway with all types of vehicles on it, right? Large trucks and fast cars and uh, two-wheelers and so on and so forth. It's, it's, it's something like that. And the Wi-Fi standards, the way they've evolved is, I mean, particularly Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, which were significant improvements over the previous standards, I mean, Wi-Fi 5, that helped improve the capacity of these networks, right? to be able to have large numbers of devices on, on a network and also devices of different needs and capabilities, right? That was Wi-Fi 6. And then Wi-Fi 6E extended this into a brand new spectrum, into the 6 gigahertz band, which was first opened up in the US and now over 40 countries have uh, have opened up this band. And that that's like building a brand new freeway, right? With 10, 10 lanes, increasing the capacity even, even more. And capacity is one aspect. The other two are reliability, the stuff I talked about earlier, which is improving the range at which a, a wireless device can reliably operate. And last but not the least, power consumption, right? So you can improve the battery life of devices that are that are not plugged in, right? So these are all significant enhancements that happened in the Wi-Fi standards, I um, mean, going into Wi-Fi 6 and then into 6E. And I'm actually very um, excited to share with you about what we've been doing, Infinite in particular, in this in this space. Okay, let's talk about that. So the standards is one part, right? Like we talked about Wi-Fi 6 and 6E, but so we, of course, implement all of that and we recently launched a new family of connected microcontrollers. So these are products that have connectivity like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth integrated along with the microcontroller. So we announced a new family called uh, 5591X, which is a family of microcontrollers with great connectivity built into them. These are very versatile, so they can be used to build a whole variety of smart home devices, whether it's a garage door opener or a door lock or a sprinkler controller or a coffee machine or a thermostat and so on and so forth, right? It very easily lends itself to build cost-optimized, power-efficient, and small form factor devices for not just the smart home space, but also for other applications like industrial wearables and so on and so forth. And in all these products, what's key is, okay, one is, of course, the great connectivity where we don't just implement what the Wi-Fi 6 and 60 standards call for. We go above and beyond and increase the range even further, up to 40% more than what the standard requirement calls for in terms of range. But in addition to that, these products, like I just mentioned, this whole range of them, garage door openers to sprinkler controllers and so on, they need a lot of software. And it takes a lot of work developing the software for each of those use cases. And we make it very easy. We've, We've done a lot of software built into these products, including the matter standard that I talked about earlier. So our customers can focus on their application, whatever product they're building, right? Whatever is unique about their garage door opener compared to some other garage door opener or their 
coffee machine versus some other coffee machine. We, we let them focus on those aspects and we take out all the complexity of the connectivity, the matter standard and over the air software update. The software required for all these has already been implemented and tested on a Modus Toolbox platform, thereby allowing our customers to reduce their time to market right, with whatever innovative products they want to bring to the market. So that's what we're doing. We're really excited about this product that we list, the family that we just launched. Fantastic. Well, what's on the horizon for Infineon? A lot, actually. I mean, this is just the first of the connected microcontrollers that we launched. I mean, we're working on extending this to, to create a whole um, family of, of microcontrollers with connectivity built into them, which are going to launch over the next uh, next year or two. I mean, our journey is about seven years long in the space in IoT, and we've shipped over a billion devices in these seven years. So we are we're a leader in this space, and our customers and the ecosystem can expect more such solutions to be launched from Infineon, which will basically have the right levels of compute, the right level of security, and the right level of connectivity in order to build smart devices for all the applications that I talked about earlier, and a few more that probably we haven't thought of yet, and our customers will come up with uh, creative new ideas to launch devices using our products. Fantastic. All right, it's time for your off-the-cuff question. So if you could have one meal right now, it doesn't matter if it's on the other side of the world, you need a passport to get there, what would you have? There's so many options, but if I can, if I need to do one, I'd uh, fly to Tokyo and I'd go to the Tsukiji market there and get a whole plate of uh, sushi for myself. That's my favorite food. I love it. And I would do the exact same thing. <laughs> well, this was super cool. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia. It was, uh, it was great being on your show and thanks for inviting me. Did you hear about the new smart fabric that can convert solar energy and body heat into electricity? So get this, a research team from the University of Waterloo have developed a new smart fabric that has multifunctional sensing capabilities and has the potential to be self-powered. The key for this revolutionary research lies with Maxine. So if you didn't already know, Maxine is an emerging 2D material with a rare combination of properties like electric and metallic conductivity, biocompatibility, large surface area, size tunability, rich surface chemistry, flexibility, and layered structure. And this team from Waterloo University was able to develop a stretchable Maxine-based thermoelectric fabric with the capability to accurately detect temperature and strain stimuli. Unlike current wearable devices that often depend on external power sources or frequent recharging, this breakthrough research has created a novel fabric which is more stable, durable, and cost-effective than other fabrics on the market today. Yunling Li, a professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Waterloo University, explains why this research could be a game changer for smart wearable technology. AI technology is evolving rapidly, offering sophisticated signal analysis for health monitoring, food and pharmaceutical storage, environmental monitoring, and more. However, this progress relies on extensive data collection, which conventional sensors, often bulky, heavy, and costly, cannot meet. Printed sensors, including those embedded in smart fabrics, are ideal for continuous data collection and monitoring. This new smart fabric is a step forward in making these applications practical. Now, since a variety of different sensors can be integrated into this new material, it can detect changes in temperature, monitor pressure, chemical composition, and more. 
and a list of potential applications for this new Maxine-based smart fabric are about a mile long. But this team did pose a very interesting application example in their new research paper called Maxine-based thermal electric fabric integrated with temperature and strain sensing for health monitoring. And that application was a smart face mask. This face mask would be able to track breath rate and temperature and detect chemicals in the breath to help identify viruses, lung cancer, and other conditions. From here, this team plans to further enhance the performance of this fabric by integrating it with electronic components. And further developments on the roadmap could also include a smartphone app to track and transmit data from the fabric to healthcare professionals, enabling real-time, non-invasive health monitoring and everyday use. To sum it up, Professor Yuling Li puts it perfectly as this innovation brings us closer to practical applications for smart fabrics. And I, for one, am excited to see smart fabrics become commonplace. We may have to wait a bit, but I am hopeful. So if you want even more information about this new smart fabric research out of the University of Waterloo or more information about Infineon's Wi-Fi 6 and 6E solutions and their AirRock Wi-Fi connected MCUs, I've included several links on this week's fish frying page on eejournal.com and in the description for this week's YouTube episode as well. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon 2. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series and our new animated series called Libby's Lab. And, of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast on Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes, including a very super cool 600th episode coming soon. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com, or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 23rd, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>